Hi. I hope everybody's doing all right. I'm sorry that I've been so absent, but there have been many challenging things these last couple of weeks, really since post-holiday. It's been, as we've all experienced, such a crazy level of unrest, what, what we've seen in our government and in the world and, you know, the continuing trials and tribulations of COVID. It's just been, it's been a lot. I've been kind of silent because of it. I felt, I felt like I'm in a place where I'm revisiting dread. You know, dread is an emotion that I never really, from the earliest recollection of dread, I, I've run from it. I can remember being in junior high school and I think I must have been in the seventh grade and uh, there was a new side of our cafeteria and there was an old side of the cafeteria and the, the old side was for more senior high students depending upon your, your lunch period and um, that's where the actual kitchen was and as a as a seventh grader, you know, the, the first year in the in the junior senior high school, which was all one building, that um, the younger kids, their tables were on the they were kind of isolated to the new side of the cafeteria. My mother was a was a lunchroom monitor early in my uh, teenage years, and then proceeded to work on the. Um, handicap bus and she was an aide for a handful of handicapped children who started their school day at our school and then went to a different school for you know specialty uh, classes and needs and there was a, a boy that was in the ninth grade oh my god I can't even think of his name so interesting how you block things but I can remember the dread I felt walking from the cafeteria with my tray to my table and having to either pass him or be ridiculed by him. And that feeling of dread after I was through those initial feelings of that and went on to become, you know, a young man and leave school and go to college and whatnot. But that emotion that I felt then has been very present right now again. I felt that really overwhelming discomfort of where we are, um, where we are in our politics, where we are in our uh, changing of the administration, where we are in the, the ravages of of COVID, I've had two very close friends lose their father over the holiday season to COVID. I have family members currently struggling. I have a dear friend who's in the midst of this. And I just feel like at every point that gut-wrenching dread, and it is, it's tough. It's very hard for me. I, I, I really work overtime at being in a positive space and in a, in a happy place and in a, a glass half full. But right now I feel like there's a little crack in the glass and it's just emptying and I'm hanging on and I'm trying to come up with what am I supposed to be learning here? But as it stands, I think I just feel like I've been kicked in the side. And I think many of us feel that way. So I don't think I'm going this alone, but it's just an ugly, it's just ugly emotion and real emotion. I mean, you can't, you can't dispute that we feel the way we feel. I, um, you know, I continue to just push through it. I, I guess that's all you can do. You can't, I don't think we can change it. I think we can change how we perceive it, but I don't think we can change it. I'm thrilled that you know, the vaccine is here and I'm thrilled that, you know, people are getting it. I do think that we all need to continue to be super vigilant with our distancing and our masks and all of that because even with a vaccine, it is just one more layer of protection. It is not, it is not the magic bullet. It's not, it's not just going to make this vanish because we have a vaccine. It's going to make less people, you know, 
contract COVID, but COVID is still going to be present. Uh, I don't, I'm probably on the ranking of vaccine at the end of the summer, if not the fall. You know, thankfully my parents will be vaccinated sooner than, than later. Uh, my sister as well, being a teacher, she has a little bit higher up on the, the ranking and the listing for vaccines. But I just wanted to touch base and I wanted to say that, you know, I'm trudging through like we all are. I do hope that, you know, these next couple of months bring not only some happiness and some excitement and some, some well and long overdue joys. I think we are all ripe to, to just experience a day of good news. I was on the phone with a client who I adore and we were just chatting and I said, it's just like every day there's a trickle of good and just pummeling, 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 pummeling. I want a day where it's almost all good and just a trickle of pummeling, but we keep our fingers crossed. On a more um, podcast related note, I am um, working a little bit further at getting us up on hopefully Spotify and iTunes. It, you know, it's a forever changing game. The, the podcasting has been um, interesting, of course, as, as I've said, and put a couple episodes up onto the YouTube uh, channel. But when you sit down and you talk to someone and, and, and you record a conversation and then you, you know, go through a light edit, it's not it's not completely redone or, or reworked. It is just kind of where do you start and stop it? Where is a natural pause? Like, well, how does that work? That's really more what the editing is. The editing tends to be, you know, a, a good bit of just the dialogue as it occurred. And then you go back and you think, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm getting ready to launch this. And the people that you talk to they, they take pause to it. They're like, oh my God, well, what did I say? Well, how was the conversation? And um, it's interesting. I think the conversations are natural and they're real. And I think that, you know, some of the topics as we go forth with this, some of the topics will be topics that have a rawness to them and have a, 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 a wrenching quality. Some of the topics will be simply mundane. It'll be a conversation about, I don't know, what, what's your favorite food and why is it your favorite food? Like, what is your comfort food? Like, during COVID, what was the thing you made the most? Or whatever. I mean, it's just, it's just slice of life stuff. It's not, everything isn't a story. Sometimes the mundane is the story. So it's been interesting to go back to the people that, you know, I have recorded with and said, we're getting ready to launch. And, you know, there's this kind of white knuckling, like, how, how will I be? How will I be depicted? And truth be told, you are depicted in exactly the way you sat in that conversation. There's no, it's not like it's being spun in any way. And uh, when I talked to my friend Dawn about how some of the people and my friends that I had spoken to were reacting, you know, she and I kind of shrugged our shoulders because we were under that microscope. We were, uh, we were under the lights of a reality TV show and we were constantly being, you know, monitored, watched, recorded, like there was no moment that wasn't documented. And I mean, I'm sure miles and miles and miles of video footage just end up spliced and thrown on the floor. But once you've gone through that, you're like, you know, balls to the wall. Who, who really cares? In the end, who really cares? So, you know, I think it'll be what it is. I am excited. I think it's going to be the thing that's going to, you know, keep me moving along until I sneak away again because I have my arms in the dirt and I'm gardening away, but I still have some months before we get to that. But this ramble is just to say that my radio silence has been deliberate. I've not been, I've not been in a place to be my normal self. I've been in a, in a, a dark spot. I've just been in a dark spot and those are real. And so when I have these dark spots, I'm gonna share them with you. So currently I'm in the midst of that and I'm looking forward to getting to the other side of it. So thank you always for just listening to this.
because this is Chuck.